Emily Reed. I'm from um, Devon Climate Emergency uh, and I'm the project manager for the, the partnership. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about, about the, the partnership and how the plan's being produced and opportunities for you to engage in the consultation. Uh, so hopefully my slides are moving now. Does that, does that look like they're moving? Great. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, as I said, uh, tell you a bit about partnership and uh, tell you how you can get engaged. So the overarching uh, goal of the partnership is to create a resilient net zero carbon Devon where people and nature thrive. Um, and one of our partners is Plymouth University. So um, we're really excited to work closely with Low Carbon Devon. So uh, some of the ways that we're going to reach this are um, uh, to reduce carbon emissions to net zero by 2050 at the latest. Um, so that uh, means that we need to balance any continuing emissions of greenhouse gases with um, drawing down greenhouse gases from the uh, uh, atmosphere through things like tree planting uh, and improve the resilience of Devon's environment because we know that we are going to see greater climate change. We're locked into a certain amount of it. Um, so our landscapes need to be able to cope with things like increased rainfall and so do our communities. So we've got to prepare communities for a warmer world so that they're uh, ready for things like flooding. You can see the logos of the partnerships on the right there. Um, so all of the local authorities in Devon, including Plymouth and Torbay, um, as well as uh, environmental organisations such as the Wildlife Trust and emergency response organisations, as well as um, private um, companies such as uh, Western Power Distribution and South Earth Water. The partnership has declared a climate emergency and produced um, commitments as part of the declaration. So the partners are committed to uh, lobby government for the required national policy changes and resources so that we can get on with it in Devon, uh, to review their own organisational carbon emissions uh, so that they uh, meet their, their climate responsibilities in line with, with what the UN globally is saying we need to do, and to collaborate to produce and implement the Devon Carbon Plan, as well as uh, reviewing the risks uh, to communities from a warm world. Um, and I should say, actually, we would love for other organisations to sign up to the declaration. So please do consider it for your organisation and you can do so on the website. The um, partnership is uh, managed at a strategic level um, by the response group. So uh, the partner organisations um, uh, the directors and CEO level staff sit on the response group and then the tactical group is a is a sort of um, uh, an update group where staff can share learnings about um, what they're doing in their own organisations and contribute um, to refining the the work of the partnership and then there's two work streams the emissions reduction so the mitigation work stream that is led by uh, Net Zero Task Force, uh, which is 15 expert volunteers uh, from, from Devon's universities, including Plymouth, um, as well as uh, lots of different expertise, for example, waste energy. Uh, and they've contributed to um, shaping the interim Devon Carbon Plan, as well as the adaptation work stream, which is um, led by the Environment Agency. Uh, and is working with Devon Cornwall and the Isles of Scilly to produce a uh, adaptation plan. So there was an evidence gathering phase where uh, we had almost 900 submissions uh, from the public uh, with suggestions for what ought to be in the Devon Carbon Plan. We also met with the Youth Parliament, I think there's 15 schools attended that, uh, and had a series of thematic hearings uh, for example, around built environment or uh, food, land and sea, uh, where various expertise is brought together to advise. So the plan is a plan for everyone in Devon. And uh, so we've gathered together this, this evidence and we've put it into the draft interim Devon Carbon Plan. Why is it an interim plan? Uh, well, we had hoped to hold the Citizens Assembly by now, but the pandemic got in the way. Uh, so we've gone ahead and published the plan and um, signposted in the plan 
the issues that we haven't given actions uh, for, but we uh, think ought to be um, uh, dis uh, discussed by the Citizens Assembly because um, they need further deliberation. But the majority of the issues we have actually specified recommended, recommended actions for. Uh, so we'll update the plan with um, informed by the Citizens Assembly uh, at the end of next year. So uh, the plan describes what we need to do to reach net zero uh, and a trajectory to meet net zero by 2050, uh, but it does give the option for these actions to be done sooner um, so that we can meet uh, net zero before 2050. And that's a point for consultation that we would like your input on. It indicates the costs, the opportunities and the, and the co-benefits of doing that. Um, so please do read the description of the challenges for reaching net zero um, before 2050, such as the fact that um, the national timetable uh, is 2050. And um, if we uh, adopt a date that's earlier, then we're likely to um, uh, have higher costs and also be in competition with other parts of the UK that are uh, tr trying to reach it by 2050. So yeah, do, do respond to that consultation question and let us know what you think. So we're clear that um, we need additional funding and resources to deliver this plan. We haven't secured those already, um, but we do describe uh, next to each action where we think the money may come from if we know of a funding stream uh, and how much resources we think it needs broadly, not a, not a specific level, but whether it can be done with any existing resources or not. Um, there are significant opportunities for organisations, uh, both private and community investment. Uh, there are things that, that are likely to be profit making uh, and um, so it's worth having a look through that and uh, seeing if you get some inspiration there. Um, we recognise that Devon is a very rural county. We do have three major urban areas, uh, but the, the way that communities achieve net zero and their contribution will differ depending on where they are in Devon and some things will be more challenging. For example, um, stopping car use uh, in some of our remoter parts of Devon is, is more challenging. Uh, so electric vehicles will have more of a role there. There are lots of benefits to achieving net zero. So um, from health and wellbeing, prosperity and the environment, um, reducing fuel poverty through insulating buildings, um, will will benefit many people across Devon, uh, as will more active lifestyles and healthier diets. Uh, and this will put less strain on the NHS. Uh, there'll be new jobs and skills um, and um, improving our energy security will also contribute to local economic prosperity. As I said, we need to make the landscape more resilient and that will help uh, reverse the decline of biodiversity and improve water and air quality at the same time, for example, by restoring our peat bogs on Dartmoor and Exmoor. So um, we'd love you to go on the website and um, participate in the consultation that is an executive summary if you don't have time to dig into the whole document. So uh, do at least take a look at that. Uh, and um, then also attend some of our thematic webinars to align with your particular interests. So they're coming up and there's more information on our website. And do follow us on various channels where we're um, communicating. So uh, check us out on social media, um, including LinkedIn and on the website. Great, so hopefully I haven't run over time too badly and uh, there's a bit of time for questions. I think I may have. <laughs> That's great.